and welcome to Cloud Wars Live. We're delighted to be able to speak today with Bruno Ziza, who runs the analytics business at Oracle. Bruno, welcome back. Glad to have you. Hi, Bob. Thanks for having me. Great to see you as well. Yeah, so Bruno, it's, it's just over a year, year and a half since you joined Oracle. And I know right at that time, you really wanted to come in and refashion what the Oracle Analytics Summit was all about. And you also had a big initiative leading into that. You didn't want it to be Oracle specific, talking about you know every detail of every product there, but rather what are the customers looking for, right? Tell us about that and sort of from what the journey started like a year ago and then how you're bringing that up to date for the summit next week on May 12th. That's correct. Well, Bob, you, you remember when I joined, you know, uh, we started with the customer and that's how if you want to build a successful product business, I believe, you know, you get to start with the end in mind, which is what customers want to do with it. So you're right. When I started, I was really focused on understanding what was going on with these customers. So, you know, the first uh, few months I just got on the call and I called the top 150 customers and asked them a very simple question. What can we do to help you innovate at scale? And I just put myself on mute. And I just took a bunch of notes and out of those conversations came out um, a lot of feedback around our products, uh, our go to market, our pricing, how we were embracing the community and so forth. So every single area, you know, we annotated them, we looked into the data itself, and then we built our go to market based on that. So you, you remember, we simplified our product. We had 18 products. We went to three products. So to make it very clear and simple for people to acquire these products and understand where we're investing, we also changed the pricing. We changed the way we price and, and the pricing level. And we also changed the way we were approaching and supporting the community. And so one big moment, if you will, of last year was the Oracle Analytics Summit 2019 that we run at Skywalker Ranch. It's a physical event. It's very successful because it really showed the world the thing that there is a gigantic community out there of Oracle Analytics experts and, and really great innovators and visionaries, but they just hadn't been offered the platform to get together. And so, so this year I'm excited to do even more and, and we'll talk about some of the customer examples there, but that's really the idea. The idea is, is infuse customer centricity into everything that we do from building the product to also just distributing it and supporting it. You know, so over this past year, right, since you did the, yeah. you know, your first summit there, the physical event a year ago, and of course it'll be virtual this year, but it seems like, you know, every tech company in the world is saying, well, we're, we're in the data business, we're an analytics company and so on. So if I'm a buyer, if I'm yeah. a business customer somewhere trying to figure out what should my data strategy be, I've got 500 tech companies telling me I'm the best, pick me. What's yeah. the differentiator for Oracle? So there's quite a few uh, areas of differentiation. I think you're right. In general, just every company you, you will talk to today will tell you they're in the AI business and the data business. And I think to some extent that's true. You know, every company is turning to software company and they need to use data to differentiate themselves. The, the difference here and the reason why the Oracle opportunity and, and the customer opportunity using Oracle is, is amazing and is really leading is because of a few, few reasons. The first one is if you look at the success factor or maybe the failures of, of the analytics world is that they have not been connected to what people actually do on a daily basis and what the workflows that they're implementing inside their applications uh, do in order to generate data and also help machine learning uh, drive better actions uh, all together within their workflow. So, you know, if you're looking for a differentiation point, you know, Oracle is, is a leader in the application business from, you know, HR systems and finance systems all the way to uh, sales and marketing systems. And so it's important that analytics gets connected to what people are doing because the differentiation in analytics is not the fact that you have data and you can analyze it. Of course, that's required. But what's more important is how you use that in order to affect change. And so you want to partner with a vendor that understands that. And additionally, it's great that you have data, but is data clean? Is it secure? Is it the same data being used everywhere? So there you want someone that understands that opportunity and, and Oracle brings 40 years worth of know-how and, and excellence in the database business. And so once you combine these two worlds, is truly when you can have a combination that enables your organization to, to innovate, right? It's the ability to understand the data, secure it, clean it, make it reliable, and also now infuse that data and use machine learning so the actions that your people take on a daily basis happen, happening in their, in their applications is powered by data. Um, it's really unique. No other company in the world has that. You'll find companies that are strong on the application side and you'll find companies that are strong on the database side, but there's really no company that has both 
um, you know, leadership, uh, you know, uh, know-how in both in both areas. And so I think that's why it's differentiated here at all. So, Bruno, one other thing. So it's, uh, it'll be May 12th that uh, yeah. you know, the Oracle Analytics Summit comes up. And clearly, you know, the entire world has been rocked over the last seven or eight weeks yeah. with the uh, COVID-19 crisis. So yeah. if you can offer two, please, two answers to this in some way. Yeah. What is it that companies, given the current state of things, are consumed by? What are their top priorities? And then second, almost like if you can see if, if we start to get past some of the, the COVID crisis, a little bit back toward normal, what are then going to be the ongoing top priorities for the, the customers out there? Yeah, so those are loaded questions. I think the, the first thing I will take is how we looked at the, this crisis uh, is not looking at it as a threat. Of course, it's a difficult time and it's difficult for many organizations. And I think in general, um, what we've been looking at is this is an opportunity actually to rethink how we are helping the community. So for instance, you know, some of our competitors canceled or even postponed their events. And when we looked at uh, the challenge of being able to run a community event, well, really what we're trying to do is create a platform for the community to learn from each other, create a platform for the community to tell us how we're doing and create a platform for us to inform the community about our priorities. You know, we thought, you know what? The digital way of doing this it actually is superior to the physical event. The physical event was going to accommodate just a few hundreds uh, of our best analytics leaders uh, across the world. Now we have thousands registered for this online experience. The physical event was going to be a one day, a one day and a half experience where people had to physically come to the event. Now we've created a launch on May 12th and every week you'll be able to come back into the experience, experience more content, connect with us more and give us more feedback. So really I think the, the, the change here is, is really enabling us to further our commitment to the community. You know, the, the, our commitment to the community is not one moment uh, in time. It's a, it's a movement that we're building that is continuous because we're you know, in, invested in their personal and professional success. What you'll see in the event uh, when you join on May 12th, first of all, you'll see a great keynote. We'll see a great customer panel with Home Office and FedEx uh, and King Gold from Apex, a really global representation. And then every week you'll get access to more and more customer presentations. I think all in all, uh, across the customer presentations and the customer testimonial, we have about 60 customer uh, best practice sessions. Some of our competitors don't have a tenth of that. And then you'll get tech innovation sessions every week coming at you. So, so as a customer, you know, you're not overwhelmed by just having to stop your business and come physically. You feel like you have a platform that's there along your side supporting you ongoing. And so I think, you know, it's not so much that we got to, think about what we're going to do when we go back to normal here. I think we have the opportunity to think about, okay, this is our new normal and it's definitely going to change. Even after we go back to the normal times, what can we do to do more and help people more at a time where I believe they need us more. They don't need us less. They need, they need more from us. And, and hopefully they'll be able to feel that through, through this new experience we put together for them. Bruno, I think it's it's partly the time, it's partly the capabilities Oracle can offer. I think it's partly your outlook, your your uh, your sort of viewpoint on the world as a as a leader. You describe this as a movement, yeah. right? That's a that's an interesting way to look at this in a in a very sometimes what can be a very product and code driven world. What's the movement allow Oracle Analytics to do that others can't? Well, there's a there's a few things. I think the first one is in the past, you know, it was probably fairly hard for the world to see how much innovation is occurring uh, inside the Oracle Analytics community. Like for instance, you know, you'll get to hear from uh, Gary at GE who's used uh, blockchain and analytics, you know, the fantastic use case um, that secures transactions across this large distributed organization. You'll hear from FedEx. FedEx has reduced the, 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 the ETL process by a factor of 10x. You, you'll hear from Schneider Electric. Schneider Electric is doing HR analytics. They, their application that's powered by Oracle Analytics is so successful, it's getting 95% adoption. 95% in the space where, you know, the adoption rate are anywhere between 10 to 50%. Yeah. So, so you'll you'll get to hear those amazing um, those amazing stories. So, so I think that's the first the first aspect here is that as Oracle the company we are the partner of their professional and personal success, but it doesn't mean that we have to lead the conversation. What it means is we're creating a platform. They come together and they share with the community. 
And frankly, the best way that we can scale is by getting out the way, just giving them the tools. They can talk to each other. I think anyone listening to us now wants to know how is it that Schneider, you know, gets 95% adoption. I can't get that. So you want to hear and you want to connect with Manisha. Uh, and you, you, I mean, you'll get stories and stories just like that. I mean, if you, if I look, you know, this, this movement I'm describing last year, uh, I think we had uh, in the keynote, we had three customers. This year in the keynote, we have six customers and we have following that a panel with three more. And then you'll get more and more customer stories. So really creating this idea that this is really the place you come in where your success is celebrated and your best practices are being shared so people can success. So success begets more success across uh, the community. And then that, it's not just the customers. So, so the partners, you know, you'll hear stories. Last year we had PwC, KPMG, and Deloitte. This year we have all these partners. Plus we have Accenture. Plus we have partners like Redmond Mead. We have a Proficient. We have Inrail. We have lots and lots of partners coming in and sharing their best practices as well. So if you, if you look at the amount of Oracle Analytics content that we're producing, it's a very small amount. Of course, we'll be talking about our tech innovation, we'll talk about data science, we'll talk about Python, we'll talk about data catalog services and data science services, because, because there are a lot that we're delivering and service to our customers. But the focus really has been around, look at what the community is doing. It's a gigantic global community that's innovating. And really, it's just our job to put a platform together to, to, to describe this moment uh, and, and, uh, and describe this movement, really. The, the brand promise today seems to come through so much more strongly when customers are yeah. celebrating, you know, what a different tech vendor can do or not. And yeah. Bruno, do you have a sense of from, you know, the Oracle Analytics Summit a year ago to today, the one that will happen on May 12th, what changes have you seen? You, you refer often to the community. What are the different titles or job responsibilities or parts of the company that are now coming to the table and said, I need some of this analytics magic? Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting you're, you're mentioning titles because, you know, I always see my, my, my job as, yes, I'm a software provider, but in a way I'm invested in the careers of, mm -hmm. of uh, my champions. Um, and we keep track, actually. We keep track of the people that are getting promoted. So you'll, you'll get to hear... Uh, from Derek, for instance, at uh, Alfront Media, who deployed analytics three times faster than it was supposed to and actually got promoted in the process. Uh, Bishma, who many people discovered last year at Riverbed, um, got promoted this year and became a VP of analytics and, and applications as well. And so we celebrate those and, and people are, are getting more and more responsibility because they started being successful maybe as a director of analytics and now they're a VP of data architecture and data strategy and so forth. And so there's a true opportunity here, I think connecting back to the comment you made earlier, which is analytics, AI is, is, and data is, are becoming core capabilities of, of an organization that wants to compete. And so if you, if you have talent there and you're giving them the right tools, that you'll find that they're promoted. So um, that's the first factor. The other factor that I'll add, uh, Bob, here is this idea that it doesn't stop here. We are building vehicles to get feedback because we understand that when people bet on us, we have to continuously ask them, what can we do that's better? So you'll see in the sessions, you have Q&As, you have surveys. We have this facility we've created that's a, called the Idea Lab, which is a place where thousands of ideas are coming in telling us what you want us to build. So we're bringing our customers in our community into the co-creation of the product. Because if you think about it, it's not just the bits that matter. It's everything around it, how we support it, how we sell it. And the best people to tell us how to do that best for them is our, our, our customers and our community members. We're organizing eight customer advisory boards where uh, two of them are going to be what we call the open idea lab or open customer uh, advisory boards where anyone in the community can join those. So really kind of opening the gate to say, look, the success of this industry, if you will, the success of Oracle Analytics in general as a representation of where the industry is going really depends on the community co-creating with us. And so that's what has changed, I think. And, and if I look year over year, I mean, we have five times the amount of opportunities for them to contribute. We have five times the amount of customer stories. Uh, we have five times the amount of tech innovation. So really it's kind of a 5X you know, multiplier. And, and it's just the beginning. It's really kind of the flywheel that I believe next year when you and I talk, we'll have 10 times more than we have this year uh, because it just keeps on growing. 
You know, the, the co-creation thing, I think a lot of companies talk about it, but it scares yeah. some companies, right? Because it sure. puts them out in a place where they don't have as much control as they did in the past. So how are you able to make yeah. that work successfully with Oracle Analytics? Well, I think probably one of the unfair advantages that we have is we do have a lot of talent internally that really knows this space well. And so that's probably where it's more comfortable for us to um, to accommodate this because we do have, I mean, if you look at some of the sessions and you, you'll be blown away by the, the breadth of the content, right? I mean, you, we have content for data engineers all the way to content for business uh, users, right? And, and that's just the nature of our business is we have really strong people that understand data science and data engineering because they come from the database business and, and they can talk to you about big data SQL. They can talk to you about streaming data. They, you know, I mean, you'll, you'll get some great sessions there. And we have folks that understand machine learning and we have folks that understand uh, natural, uh, natural language processing and search and so forth. So I think it might be a little easier for us, but in general, there's always going to be an area where someone's going to take us where maybe we don't know, we haven't done it and we haven't thought about it. And for there, I think it really is more, it's not an aptitude question, it's really an attitude question. When I join uh, Oracle, the book that I bought my team is this book by Brene Brown called Dare to Lead. I don't know if you've read this book, mm -hmm. but it's about uh, being vulnerable. And, uh, you know, there's some areas where we're going to be asked to do things that we've never done before. The key there, I think, is to be transparent and vulnerable with the community and say, you know what, we don't know, but we're committed to figuring it out. And so if enough of you are asking for something that we don't know, well, that's great. We just discovered a blind spot that we really need to, <laughs> to solve because it's clearly the representation of something that a lot of people need. And so it's a combination of aptitude that we, I think, is probably an unfair advantage on our side. But I think a big part is the attitude part, which, you know, every product team in the planet, uh, I think, needs to learn. We don't have the answer to everything. But customers are looking a lot for unfair. They, they want to buy from somebody who has unfair advantages, right? Yeah. That you, you don't want to go with somebody who says, well, I don't really have any advantages, but uh, I, I throw a nice cocktail party. It's like, oh, okay. Right. And, you know, I think it's, it's important for any vendor to recognize that unfair advantage because it's not a, uh, it's not a bad thing to be aware of it. you got to understand what your center of gravity is and what you can be the best at in the world. I think for us, we found this intersection between application and database, which uh, you know, we, we believe is, is the foundation of any uh, successful company. Um, you know, I, I, I could turn to any competitor and, and, and find, okay, well, they, they have a different advantage and they should absolutely pursue it. And they certainly should not compete with me on those two things because I have a better shot of being the best in the world. And, and similarly, mm -hmm. I'm not going to compete with people that, you know, might have a better corner than, than I do. Um, so it's not, a, it shouldn't be a taboo. It should just be something that's pretty uh, obvious to everyone, both to, my partners, my customers, and also my competition. There's enough, there's enough uh, market for everyone here, for sure. Yeah. Bruno, I loved your idea when you talked about the idea labs and that openness that yeah. uh, the Oracle Analytics team has about getting feedback. Tell us what you want, tell us what you need, ultimately lead it, leading to the co-creation. And I remember it was, you know, a handful of years or so ago, uh, Steve Miranda, the head of applications at Oracle, yeah. he told a couple of great stories about how in the old world, the on-premises world, said if a, a customer would come up and say, oh, I love this, but yeah. could you add that? Sure. And Steve would say with the very best of intentions, this would be 18, 24, 30, 36 months before those ideas could get into the process, just with the way the applications were developed and the buyers would buy the new version. So there was this enormous lag time. How quickly are you able now to get some of these ideas from the Idea Lab into the Oracle Analytics That's technology? Okay. It's a great question because I think Steve is, Steve is right, which is the ability for us to ingest kind of an idea and then make it available to the market is, is it, now with technology, you know, we have a cloud-based and AI-based uh, analytics platforms. So it's a lot easier for us to deploy. In fact, um, you know, over the last year of, of, of these ideas, we're actually starting to think, I don't know, so don't quote me on this, but I don't know if we're going to be able to make this happen. We've actually thought about naming some of those features by the name of the person that actually <laughs> submitted them. Uh, so that's how deep uh, we've been able to do it. You know, with, with quarterly cadence on, on, on shipping product, it's, it's really quite fast to be able to deploy. It depends now on the complexity of the feature. But in general, I would say, you know, it's, it's a question of weeks, sometimes even, you know, months, not hours just yet. 
but I think that's how quickly you, you're able to kind of accommodate. If it's a small feature, um, it's it's really rapid. If it's if it's a large one, it probably has to wait on quarterly um, you know updates. But I'll give you a, an example that we did just this year, where um, one of the big points of feedback from the community was, okay, you're an AI and cloud-first solution, but what are you doing for the on-premise customer? We created a product called the Oracle Analytics Server, which is the cloud version of our software available on your cloud or on your premise. Now, this is a product that didn't exist six months ago. So it really shows, one, the ability to listen to what the customers want and make sure that they have a path to move to the cloud at their own speed. But then secondly, our ability to deliver on what they're asking us so they can be successful. And so I, I'd say just a short way to answer your question is, the answer to that is very rapid. And you know, our job is to create a vehicle so they can express those needs. So I'll even you know, pick a, another simple example that you'll see in the OA Summit. I talked about this content that is going to be available to them on a weekly basis. You'll see as well that we have this, this section called call for papers. If there is something that is in the agenda and this very beefy agenda, as I said, you know, we have now content available forever. Every week it's recorded. Uh, you can join it whenever at your own speed. You can share it because it's a free environment. So you can share it with your environment, uh, with your teams. If there is something that's missing and you want to submit it, go ahead and we'll make your session available. So that's how open and how willing we are to co-create co with our community is. If you have a session in mind, Bob, if you have a session and you want to talk to our community, submit your, your idea and then we'll make that happen through the facility. Uh, that's great. And it very much resonates with that notion, Bruno, you've been talking about a community, you know, it's a two way yeah. thing, not a, not a lecture series. So Absolutely. Bruno, one more question I wanted to ask, and then to turn it over for anything that you wanted to add. Um, in our conversation here, you've brought up, you know, like analytics in HR, you've talked about, you know, from uh, somebody getting a nice promotion up to be a data architect of traditional ETL things about AI and ML. What's the, what's the, current analytics neighborhood look like, right? If analytics is in the center, you're touching almost every other part of the, of the technology that's being used today, but also inside companies. Is there, uh, what are the boundaries there where analytics is now just, there are people counting on this. This is mission critical stuff for what they're doing every day. Yeah, and I think that the key term here is mission critical. A secure data in the cloud, the tight connection with applications. You know, our customers deploy and lease capabilities across tens of thousands of users, highly connected with workflows that are related to financial transactions or people, data, and so forth. So it's, I would say, in, in a way to summarize, it's very serious stuff, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to building a dashboard for sales and marketing about lead conversions, which is important, but is often not viewed as business critical as other initiatives inside the, the enterprise. Now, it's a wide range, right? So the types of customers we talk to, you know, we work with companies like Stitch Fix, you know, that work on finance. We work with companies uh, like Dropbox that work on finance and we'll turn and work with Schneider Electric works on HR. So we have a very wide range of access to um, these use cases. I would say in the way I look at where it's going, I just don't think we're even scratching the surface. Last time we talked, Bob, you know, we talked about this acronym AI that stands for artificial intelligence. And I don't know if you remember, I'd said, you know, it's not artificial intelligence. AI actually stands for applied and invisible because I really truly think that if you architect correctly, the power of data and analytics is going to come in forms that are invisible to you. And that's kind of the value is that decisions are made, decisions are recommended, actions are taken without you even knowing so that's the invisible part of it and why are they applied is because analytics and data in the ether you know that is not relevant to what you're doing is really meaningless and so we need to continue focus on how is this data and analytics turning into action and execution so we can uh, uh experience our full potential and i think that's where we haven't been there we spent a lot of time making sure that dashboards were beautiful that data was available but now what and the what is actions and execution. In fact, the theme of the OA Summit is execution and action precisely because of this. So Bruno, what's the top of your mind for next week? I mean, clearly you're really excited about it. There's gonna be a ton going on. You've got customer centered content. You've got chances for feedback and all that. What should people be looking forward to next week? And what would you challenge folks who are gonna participate in the OA Summit to bring to it? 
So I would say a few things. The first thing that I would tell people is go take a look at the teaser videos of the customers that we've already interviewed that give you a preview of what they're going to talk about. So you'll, you've seen uh, videos from Nisha, from uh, Gary, uh, you've seen video from Jeff at the state of Maine. I mean, the story state of Maine, you know, 8,000 data uh, uh, components uh, and supported by eight people. Right, so you get amazing stories here that you're going to hear throughout this event. And for having participated in the creation of all these stories, I can tell you, it's it's really quite amazing. So I would I would challenge for people to go and watch those teaser videos, so that they can get their questions ready. You know, come in to the event with a pencil and piece of paper. Make sure you write your questions and let us know what they are. Then second, once you have viewed this, let us know how we did. We have a survey after every session. We want to know how this content is helping you. So don't be shy. Tell us when it's great, tell us when it's not great. Share the content with your community internally, the people who are part of your success plan inside your, your company. This is a free event, make it accessible to them. That's why we kind of designed this experience without a registration password, without a paying wall. This is some information we want all of you to have access to. And then finally, if you have a session that you wanna contribute, don't be shy either. Let us know, submit through the call for papers, and then we'll put it into the agenda. Like I said, you know, this is a continuous event. This is not just one event that happens on May 12th. This is something that starts on May 12th and just goes on forever uh, until we really have solved all the problems related to analytics. So you can imagine we've got a long way to go. And so participate, engage, give us feedback. Uh, there's also the Gartner Peer Insight. You know, uh, Bob, last year, uh, when you and I talk, we were a niche vendor. Now we are have been recognized as a visionary by Gartner. We're also a leader by force. Just a lot of things have changed in our environment. And so that is due to the feedback that the community gave to those analyst firms. So I would encourage you to continue doing that. There's a great facility called the Gartner Peer Insights. Go ahead and let us know what you think about their, their product. We're not shy about that. We want everyone to know. So that data, by the way, goes directly to the analyst. That shows you how vulnerable we're going to be. Yeah. So that's really kind of the challenge. Watch the teasers, engage, let us know how we do, and then give us give us the feedback through however ve whatever vehicle is available. To you.